Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Taxpayers and tax pros should be ready to verify their identity when calling the IRS. IRS Tax Tip 2021-110 July 29, 2021. Taxpayers and tax professionals calling the IRS will be asked to verify their identity. This is part of the agency's ongoing efforts to keep taxpayers' data secure from identity thieves. So when you call the IRS for issues, obviously you're going to have to verify your identity if they're going to be talking about sensitive tax information. So you want to make sure you have the resources available on you when you call the IRS because you might be on hold for some time to get a hold of someone over there. And you want to make sure that once you are contacted with them, that you have the information to verify your identity so you can actually talk to them about what it is you want to talk about. So before calling, everyone should visit irs.gov, irs.gov, the IRS website, to access resources like the Let Us Help You page. There's a link to the Let Us Help You page here to get faster answers to their tax questions. Now, obviously, like many businesses at this point in time, the IRS is trying to get people to go to their web page for as much data as they possibly can. Even your personal account, they're trying to get people to log in to their personal kind of information on the web page as well and possibly get information for like payment information there in order to reduce the phone calls in part because they have been uh, understaffed with the COVID thing and I'm just, I think they're still kind of understaffed in terms of the phone calls plus they're trying to just move away to be more digital like in general so uh, hopefully the, the the call times are getting better at the IRS they were really not good for some time it seems during the pandemic but again even still they're trying to move people on to the to the website in general so if taxpayers decide to call they should know the irs phone assisters take great care in only discussing personal information with the taxpayer and someone the taxpayer authorizes to be, speak on their behalf so in other words if you cannot give them authorization they're not going to talk to you and i like how they say great care some of some of the people at the irs are, are really obviously really nice people that, to talk to they obviously you have to deal with a lot of different people but some of them are classic kind of bureaucrats it's like you can almost see them get a kick out of ah we can't talk to you because you don't have the you know we don't have the verification information i'm sorry <laughs> you know so it kind of depends on who you talk to over there and on how how kind of nice they are but in any case you're going to have to verify your identity in order to to talk to them and you want to make sure that you have the resources to do that so that when you actually get a hold of someone you can talk to them about the issue you need to talk to them about. So to make sure the taxpayers do not have to call back, the IRS reminds taxpayers to have the following information ready. This is what you need, people. The social security number, SSN, and birth dates for those who were not were named on the tax return. So you might actually want the tax return in front of you as well. But of course, the social security numbers, because how does the IRS know who you are? You're not a person. You're a number. You're a social security number. So make sure you got it when you talk to them or they don't know who you are. An individual taxpayer identification number, an I-10 letter if the taxpayer has one instead of the social security number. So if you don't got a social security number, then you should have an I-10 number. Their filing status, single head of household, married filing joint, or married filing separate. That should be on the tax return. So it should be up top, page 1, 1040. The prior year tax return. Phone and assisters may need to verify taxpayer identity with information from the return before answering certain questions. So they're going to pull random numbers from your tax return, often like the adjusted gross income, AGI, usually at the bottom of 10, the form 1040. And again, it depends on what kind of helper you're getting on the IRS side as to how much glee they take from you struggling to try to find this number that they're trying to get you to find on the tax return. And then hopefully once you provide that, then you can move on to the next verification question. A copy of the tax return in question. Any IRS letters or notices received by the taxpayer. So if you're calling about a letter or notice, then you don't want to just be like, I got this letter, you know, at some point. You want the letter in front of you because you can then give them the date of the letter and uh, and when they sent it out and whatnot and the, possibly an, a number on the letter so they know exactly what you're talking about over there. So by law, IRS telephone assisters will only speak with the taxpayer or to the taxpayer's legally designated representative. There's a link to the legally designated representative, possibly a power of attorney, which you would need a POA in order to get someone else to talk on your behalf to the IRS, which could save you some stress uh, to do that. But you got to you got to 
get the authorization for someone else to represent you in that way if you want to go that option. You might be able to do it online now, which is nice, get the power of attorney signed online. But in any case, if taxpayers or tax professionals are calling about someone else's account, they should be prepared to verify their identities and provide information about the person they are representing. So obviously, if you are a representative, a CPA or something that calls the IRS on occasion about your clients, then of course, you're well aware, most likely, with you know the different people and the requirements that uh, they're going to ask you for your power of attorney and whatnot and give you all the numbers and try to verify your information as a representative of the client. Same kind of thing. Sometimes you get the people that are really nice over there and get the information and push forward. And other people just seem like they really would really like you not to get the information just because, so just to be difficult, but whatever. Before calling third about a third party, they should have the following information available. Verbal or written authentication from the third party to discuss the account. The ability to verify the taxpayer's name, social security number, or I-10 tax period and tax forms filed. Prepare or tax identification number or PIN if a third party designee. One of these forms, which is current, completed, and signed. You're going to need the Form 8821, Tax Information Authorization, or the Form 2848, the power of attorney and declaration of representative. So those are the forms that give you the authority to kind of make decisions or at least talk to the IRS on someone else's behalf, in essence, being an agent in that sense for them. So there's going to be links to those forms and some other of this crucial information here that you can check out. And there'll be a link to this in the description.